All right, James, so you have an Acrobat and some logs and you want it checked out, so let's take a look. Okay, so first getting into the log file, I can see it's on uh, Betaflight 3.5.5, uh, aka K, uh, sampling rate of two kilohertz. So let's go ahead and check out the header file. Uh, See so your PIDs here, looks like those are stock. Yep. And um, looks like you have filters here and um, you're recording a FFT frequency debug with the dynamic notch turned on. Okay, so pulling up your traces. So FFT debug, I'm gonna hit uh, debug six on my uh, little uh, template here. So it will bring up all the or the trace template six here, and then I can look at my debug mode frequency here. So with FFT uh, frequency debug, as you know, this these are the uh, center frequencies of the the dynamic notch, and then this is the roll access for raw noise. So let's run a spectrum on that. So looking at this here, uh, pretty tame raw noise. I do see some of these uh, spikes down here. I'm assuming this is you know just you're in your flight combating prop wash, so we'll set that aside, but didn't note that. These peak noises here are pretty low, uh, but the, on the other flip side of here, there's not a ton of full throttle um, flight in this. You know, there's some spots here, and it looks like a pretty um, kind of tame cruise around, I guess I would say. You know, it's not a super aggressive flight. So one thing uh, you may want to do is just get out there um, and really rip it hard, uh, doing a lot of flips and rolls and, and uh, some full throttles to set your noise. So with that, I would recommend that before doing the next steps I would look at here. Since you're doing AK, AK, uh, what I would really do is you shouldn't need low pass two uh, for the gyro, definitely. And in this case, if the noise spectrums are this low so let's go back to that debug two here and run that when i mean this low run debug three and seeing that these these um, amount of noise here is that low you could probably uh, end up turning off lpf number two on the d term and then moving these low pass uh, for low pass one on the gyro and low pass one on the d term move these way up let me show you something here that I've been experimenting with. So here's a log for my five inch. And if I, this has a debug underscore gyro scaled. So this gives you raw noise uh, on the roll, pitch, and yaw from debug zero, one, and two. And if I run the spectrum on those, you can see it's somewhat similar to what you're showing here, right? It's pretty low amplitude noise. Uh, these are HQ uh, V1S. 50, 43 props, um, clear, and you can see there's this one has a little bit of a peak, and then yaw here as well. So pretty low amplitude. Now you can see how that's getting cleaned up, and this is uh, on Betaflight 3.5.2. So it's a little, it's a couple of releases, uh, a couple of maintenance releases earlier, and you can see that's all cleaned up pretty well. And you can see I have only a D-term low pass cutoff of 100 hertz, and my gyro is up at 200 hertz. And this is a PT1 filter. So PT1, 200 hertz, low pass on the D-term, two is number is turned off, and then low pass number one is at 100 hertz. And it's, like I said, cleaned up pretty well. Same thing on the gyro for the pitch access, or the yeah, pitch access, that's cleaned up pretty well, and also for the roll, or uh, y'all. So something to consider is turning those two off, and then moving your gyro low pass one up to 200 hertz, leaving it as PT1. And then honestly on this, I'm going to do the same for my D-term low pass. I didn't run that yet, Let's see how she goes. Now, since it's an Acrobrat, do um, check your motor temps, and when you're doing motor temp checks, don't just go out and hover it and throttle up and down. Like, do a little lap around your house real quick. Just 
you know, or go back and forth in the backyard, you know, one or two times. Try to keep it 15 seconds to uh, 30 seconds, and then land it, check the motor temps. Uh, they're a little bit more susceptible. Honestly, the motors I have, the uh, RCX motors um, from my RC Mark, don't seem to ever get hot, period, so I don't have to worry about that no matter what I throw at them. But with these micros, and this is semi a micro, it's getting down there. They're a little bit more susceptible, so I don't want you to smoke a motor trying this. But I, I think you'll be all right. Just, But again, my motors do get hot if I just hover and throttle blip. But if I'm in forward flight, then, then they're fine. So I always do motor chimps in forward flight, unless you actually are hovering and throttle blipping for what you do for fun with it. But I never do that, so I don't care what the motor temperatures are for that because I'm always moving forward anyways. So anyways, uh, something to think about, and that gives a really compelling amount of latency. So as you can see, this is just the dynamic notch uh, for uh, 3.5, and you can see that there, you know, even at 200 on the gyro, 100 on the low pass, you're at 3.8 uh, total latency. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, with the dynamic filter and everything turned on, low pass one, dynamic filter, low pass two here. And then like I was saying, I, I'm gonna play with trying to take this up to 200 as well and get down to 3.0 total uh, latency on the D term. And then the P term would only have 2.2 uh, or yeah, 2.2 here, you can see. So that, that's, that's pretty good, that's, I, I like that. And one of the factors that, getting back to that, that really you know, is key for this is that you can see where your low pass cutoffs here are. There, there really is no noise here, at least on the roll. So I'm only, you know, the other thing is to take a, you know, do a debug of gyro underscore scaled and look at the roll pitch and y'all make sure there's not something on some other axis that we're not, I can't, you know, I can't see that here because we only have the raw noise on uh, roll right now because you have the debug FFT underscore frequency. So anyways, um, you don't have any noise here right right at the moment so you're really trying to set the cutoffs right before the noise this is the the motor band of noise here and uh, again that's at 200 hertz not all the way down to 100. now this is going to give you less filtering overall uh, but less latency as well so i don't you know there there's such a thing as you know over filtering where you're you know it, i don't think it hurts anything except for prop wash performance and honestly, if you're happy with prop wash performance, because there really was no uh, things you're trying to solve here in general, maybe just leave it. I mean, if everything's flying great for you, just don't mess with it. But uh, if you are interested in messing around, and then, then give that a shot. The thing I did notice in here is that those 30 hertz spikes, and I don't have, I, I believe, a flight log for this to really know, are you like kind of descending into prop wash and that's just, um, reacting to that you said you didn't have any jello or anything it seemed like everything was going really well so i'm not you know maybe to see uh noise in the uh, lower spectrum there the zero to you know this isn't noise this peak this is just motion uh if it is in a prop wash condition you know that's normally what we'd see like 20 to you know 50 hertz that's usually where the prop wash uh, frequencies are for when it's reacting to it. So if it is just reacting to it, then that's normal. If not, then, um, you know, we would look at it, but I didn't see any signs of that. It's without really having a, a log or a video of the flight, it's hard, it's hard to tell. For PIDs, I, you know, with this log, since there's no sharp, there's no flips or rolls that I've saw in the log anywhere, I can't really assess PIDs. So to do PIDs, my recommendation is to go out and just get your filters squared away then go out and just do a, a you know full stick roll do like two or three of those then do a full stick uh, pitch you know or uh, flip two or three of those then do yaw moves like just hold it in the hover and just yaw hard stick yaw left hard stick yaw right you know not back to back but do left center it do a left again center it do a left again center it and then same thing. That's the information that plasma tree is looking for. So I know everybody throws plasma tree or uh, throws full flights through plasma tree, which, which is fine, but the response graphs are, are typically quite a mess. And the step response graphs for plasma tree aren't 
really designed to handle full flights and give you uh, super useful information. It, it can, it can give you a general gist, but to really pit tune it uh, using the step response graphs, um, that's what you want to do. It should be a shorter flight. The developer says you can even have angle mode turned on, but uh, I wouldn't, I don't do that. Uh, again, I would just, in acro mode, just do full flips to the right, full flips to the left, uh, full flips forward, backwards, do a bunch of them, three or four each move, and then yaw moves, and then feed that through, and that can give you the step response. And honestly, we can just look in Black Box Explorer to see how it's reacting, if there's overshoot, so on and so forth, and, and kind of go from there. You can see the step response is here. Um, this is kind of indicating I is a little low, but you know, it's hard to tell um, until we get the PIDs kind of tuned in and then come back to a full flight and see where how I is actually, how your um, gyro is tracking on your set points. Uh, so I wouldn't put too much emphasis on this because this is just, like again, a full flight. Uh, here's the log. You've got to ignore this plasma tree graph because this is not valid for anything right here because it's not raw noise. But uh, you can see your roll, pitch, and yaw axis look pretty clean. Uh, there's the low amplitude stuff. Uh, that's the prop wash, and you can see it right here in the D term and here as well. I'm assuming that it's just that addressing prop wash. So, Looking at some of the sections of the log where it doesn't, it's, again, it's hard to tell if you're uh, f you know, flushing into some prop wash or descending through some stuff. Or, but it does look like the D term is a little high. So it's well attenuated with uh, noise. It's not like, you know, you can see it's giving a nice stern response back and forth and it's proceeding P and all that good stuff. But um, it does look to me that it's just a tad on the high side for the D term and it's causing, you know, some oscillations by it's basically overcorrecting. It's giving too much response. And then it's, again, it's, it's overcorrecting. So you can kind of see that through here with this D term really spiking up and then, it, you know, kind of goes the other direction and and so on and so forth so so this is what I'm talking about with the D being a little high and it's hard because it's not in context I really need a video to make sure this because because this could be wrong but when you're throttling up so this is throttle command here when you're throttling up you can see it starts to get that 30 Hertz to 50 Hertz oscillation now if you just did a move where you're, you know, coming into a prop wash scenario, that's to be expected. It's fighting prop wash. But if you're not, it's starting to oscillate. Uh, you can see that trend. So here it doesn't, here it's, it looks like you may be descending um, after a punch out. And so it might be correcting for that. Uh, here as well, you know, you can see your throttle up. Here's not too bad. Uh, let's go to the next one, the next piece where you're throttling up right here so you can see that so this is again if you're just punching up into the sky it shouldn't be doing this and that means your D terms too high if you are coming into prop wash and accelerating to kind of push out of it you know you're coming into your turbulent air and pushing out of it then this is expected so um, take you know get the filter stuff squared away I would do do some flips rolls let's get the pids and then see what that shows if your D terms too high you should have really soft when it's returning to set point uh, after flip or roll, it would really uh, have a soft return. It's not going to have any bounce back, and it will actually be the opposite way, where it will actually get down to zero. It will kind of slowly get down to zero, and we'll be able to see that. And that will then confirm or discredit what I just said about this D-term thing. Okay, well, hopefully you found that helpful, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Feel free to take a look at that stuff and repost the stuff back up. And as always, thanks you for your uh, Patreon support, and uh, yeah, see you around.